This is the function of the grace orientation principle. And as such, the development of the device of the flop line of the soul came into existence. And with it came a lot of wonderful things. The divine initiative had a system of grace and all the way around had everything that was necessary to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. This means there were two sources of grace in the orientation system, and they are different one from the other as a problem-solving device. The grace system is probably the most well-known one. The first source is the divine initiative of eternity past. The second one is a little different. It is the divine initiative of time instead of in eternity past. So we have time and we have eternity past. The second source is the divine initiative in time. During the dispensation of the hypostatic union, grace orientation entered into a system called a problem-solving device. And it can only function in the relationship of doctrinal orientation. Doctrinal orientation is another system for the problem-solving device on the flop line of the soul. It brings us then down to some other things that are quite interesting. These are found in different places in the Scripture, so I'm going to have to jump a little bit with regard to them. The function of the grace orientation as a problem-solving device is scattered pretty much over every part of the Scripture. The divine initiative is very much grace all the way. This means that there are two sources of grace once more. In certain parts of the Word of God, we have some interesting things with regard to this particular subject. Grace orientation emphasizes this matter. Doctrinal orientation emphasizes the whole system, but grace is the one of the most important concepts of all because it brings into action the post-salvation concept. In the grace system of God initiatives and the believer's response, we have a fantastic and wonderful system. The initiative function of grace demands that the response would also be in the field of grace. So we have response to God's initiative. This is a part of life that people have ignored very definitely. Now that takes us to legalism. Legalism is, of course, human merit. And this human merit has ability in the grace system of orientation as a problem-solving device the Lord has developed, God the Holy Spirit has developed certain things that are important with regard to the accurate response to antecedent grace. So we're looking today at one of the greatest systems that exists in Christianity. Grace orientation. Grace teaches the believer how to do many things, how to develop many things, and respond to God's initiative on antecedent grace. Grace orientation gives us the functions on the subject and the standards from which they come. John chapter 1 is one of those places where we have the opportunity of seeing this subject develop. It tells us that grace and truth were problem-solving devices used by the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and truth functioned together. So grace and truth function together. This is one of the most important things of all. Grace plus truth functions together with everything in the spiritual life. You can't get away from it. 
It's there, and it's there to stay. Grace and truth function together in this particular concept. Our Lord Jesus Christ received the function of his spiritual skills from the divine decrees, from the wonderful things that are initiated. The eternity past part is when Christ agreed to go to the cross. The plan of God for the hypostatic union came into existence. We wake and we take. We discover our functions, our problems-solving devices. And when we come to see these problem-solving devices, we immediately want to know what makes them tick. What is it that makes them so important? So we take function of the problem-solving devices as an illustration. This is from the initiative in time. This is always done this way. We take our function from time. We all live in time. We all have done something in time. We all like things that are in time. We take function of the problem-solving devices and from time, from the divine initiative of time. We take our function of the problem-solving devices from the modus operandi of the human work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And in the dispensation of the hypostatic union, our Lord Jesus had eight problem-solving devices by which he built a system for mankind on earth. Our Lord did not need to rebound or to be occupied with himself. Our Lord used these problem-solving devices to establish a standard for us. And as such, we have two assets. The first is the divine initiative, and another one for grace orientation. This means that you have the same assets that belong to the humanity of Christ. These are a wonderful start in the grace of God, the orientation to a problem-solving system. And the divine initiative is the antecedent to grace and is always ready to go into action for any number of different things that are related to the new spiritual life. This means that there are two sources of grace orientation. The first source is, is the divine initiative, the divine initiative of the past. The second his source is the divine initiative in time. So we have two that are put together here and used in this way. The second source is the divine initiative in time used by us constantly as we're doing this morning. We're using that just exactly in the same way. And the function of the humanity of Christ becomes a very important issue at this particular point. And as a result, many things follow during the dispensation of the hypostatic union. The concept of grace orientation. So we have doctrinal orientation is another problem-solving device. And it's always in place. It's always ready for action on that flat line of the soul. Humanity of Christ actually functions under the filling of the Holy Spirit and also operates under Hebrews, always raises the question, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the agency of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, how much more in that agency will there be an eternal spirit? In other words, How many areas do we find the ministry of God the Holy Spirit operational and useful to us as a part of our life? It's all put together in one concept, and when it comes into operation, it is really a strong one. So you have the same assets that the humanity of Christ 
and this offers itself to the function of God in providing for us those things that purify our conscience from the dead works to serve the living God. Grace orientation and doctrinal orientation, they function together. They just happen to have different systems as they function. And there's the humanity of Christ functioning under impersonal love. Christ functioning under the perfect happiness of John chapter 15, verse 11. And John says, I have taught you many things that my happiness may be in you. And that is your happiness with the sharing of perfect happiness from God. And this perfect happiness is only noted one time. So we have these concepts, and then we have the sharing of perfect happiness of God. So we have grace orientation, doctrinal orientation, and then there is the start of occupation with Christ and perfect happiness, which follows. Hebrews 12 Verse 2 started a very interesting development in that particular area, which says that Jesus Christ is the originator, the pioneer, and the perfecter of our doctrine. He is the pioneer, he is the perfecter of our doctrine. So we have you these various concepts that come together, and when they do, we have the Lord Jesus Christ as the originator of what he has provided for us. He endured the cross. He disregarded the shame. And these are put together as he sat down at the right hand of the Father. And as he sat down on that throne, you put it all together. The humanity of Jesus Christ under a voluntary restraint. The grace orientation that followed that particular category of grace, which is so important. All of these come together. All of these things have some meaning for us and to us. And the believer's response to the grace must be one of the strongest things in his life if he is going to succeed and glorify the Lord. There is no spiritual strength except in the sphere of grace. So this is all brought out by Peter in one of his messages. So grace orientation is the sphere for spiritual growth. That is a doctrine you must remember. You stop growing spiritually and you become a loser when you fail to stay with Bible doctrine. You cannot fulfill the Christian life outside of the sphere of grace. It is accomplished inside the sphere of grace. Apart from the function of three spiritual skills, the filling of the Holy Spirit, which is likewise important, cognition of Bible doctrine, which is equally important, the execution of the unique spiritual life, which is always important and is always the plan of God. There is no greater power than the power of the infallible Word of God cycling, circling through our stream of consciousness where there is such a fantastic development of Bible doctrine. Grace orientation, doctrinal orientation, Without which there is no grace, there is no power, there is no blessing, and therefore there is disaster. So we're grateful, Heavenly Father, that we have been warned, that we have been given the right signals, that we have been given those things that are truth and are developed as truth. And we pray that we can take these and develop them into what they were intended to be so that we might glorify our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name that we pray, amen.